Citizen Heroes The Tomb Builders In the New Kingdom, tombs were built into solid rock in the Valley of the Kings. Construction of a tomb would begin the moment the pharaoh took the throne. Tomb building was dangerous work. Because of the constant need for workers to remain at the worksite, a workers' village was built at Dire ul Medina, on the west bank of the Nile, across from Thebes. Workers labored eight hours every day for ten days in a row. Then they received one day of rest and began the work cycle again. They had their families living with them to avoid the long journey from work to home. Their houses were made of mud bricks. Wives were in charge of the household. They took care of the children and the house when their husbands were working. The workers were paid with food. They received mostly grain. Sometimes this was not enough to live on. So workers had to find additional work. Some worked as scribes, decorating the tombs of wealthy Egyptians. Building the tombs was important and hard work. Many people died because the labor was difficult and dangerous. The pharaohs counted on the tomb builders and their families to be committed and courageous. They trusted that the workers would be on time and prepared to work. Because no one really knew how long the pharaoh would live, they had to work quickly and accurately. Egyptians had social life. As you have read, the Egyptians had many different jobs. Some were farmers and pyramid builders. Others were scribes or priests. When trade expanded during the Middle Kingdom, more people became merchants and craftspeople. This caused a new middle class to emerge, made up of artisans and scribes. In the Old Kingdom, there were two levels, kings and farmers. With this new middle class, the social class structure changed. The king was at the top. Nobles and priests were next. Merchants, craftsmen, and scribes followed them. Then came farmers and unskilled workers. Another class level was added later in Egypt. When prisoners were captured in battle, they were brought to Egypt as enslaved people. An enslaved person has lost his or her freedom and is owned by another person. The Egyptians could move between classes if they worked hard. If they were born into one class, they did not have to stay there. Egyptian women had more rights than women in many other ancient civilizations. Like Sumerian women, they could inherit land and handle business transactions. Some Egyptian women may have even been scribes and merchants. Archaeologists have found an Egyptian word for a female scribe. However, most women were not taught how to read and write. Review How were the social class structures similar and different in Sumer and Egypt? Compare and contrast. Trade and technology. During the Middle Kingdom, Egypt's power began to grow. By about 2040 BC, Egypt's empire had expanded greatly. The Egyptians had been trading with people from other lands to the north and south. Trade increased during this period and made the Egyptian economy more prosperous or profitable. An economy is the way people use and manage resources. 
the Egyptians went on expeditions to Southwest Asia to trade goods such as wheat, gold, and linen with other peoples. To improve transportation, they dug a canal from the Nile River to the Red Sea, which became a trade route. Groups of people began to invade and take control of Egypt. One group was called the Hyksos, which means desert princes. The Hyksos came from Western Asia and brought new technology and ideas. They rode chariots that were pulled by horses. About 1660 B.C., the Hyksos took power in Egypt. About 100 years later, Egyptian kings again took power. This was the start of the New Kingdom, a period of even greater change and growth. Review How did the growth of trade in the Middle Kingdom affect Egypt's economy? Cause and effect. New Kingdom Pharaohs A tradition that began during the Middle Kingdom continued during the New Kingdom. Pharaohs ruled with their sons or wives. For example, Queen Sobeknefru ruled Egypt after the death of her husband. About 1498 B.C., a very powerful woman, Hatshepsut, took power. During her reign, trade expeditions brought back many valuable goods. She also started and finished several building projects. Read more about Hatshepsut in the biography on page 91. Egypt continued to expand its borders during the New Kingdom. About 1350 B.C., Amenhotep IV became pharaoh. He and his wife Nefertiti started to worship a new sun god, Aton. Amenhotep even changed his name to Akhenaten, which means servant of Aton. Many Egyptians thought it was wrong to worship a different sun god other than Ra. Akhenaten became so focused on Aton that he neglected his duties as pharaoh. His advisors took control. After Akhenaten's death, a young boy became pharaoh. His name was Tutankhamun. During his rule, order was restored. The worship of Aton was forgotten. Tutankhamun died young. However, we know about his life from the discovery of his tomb in the 20th century. Review What was different about how some pharaohs ruled during the New Kingdom? Compare and contrast. Summarize the lesson. 3150 B.C. Menes united Lower and Upper Egypt into one country. Circa 2575 B.C. The Old Kingdom began. Circa 1570 B.C. The New Kingdom began. Lesson 2. Review. Check facts and main ideas. 1. Summarize. On a separate piece of paper, fill in the missing detail in the blank box below. Pharaohs were considered god kings. The Egyptians built pyramids for the pharaohs. Pharaohs were very important to the Egyptians. 2. According to legend, how was Egypt unified? 3. What are hieroglyphics, and how do we know what they mean? 4. How was Egyptian culture similar to, and different from, Sumerian culture? 
5. Critical thinking. Evaluate information. Why was trade important to the Egyptians? Use the word economy in your answer. Link to art. Develop a plan. Put yourself in the position of an architect in ancient Egypt. Make a diagram to show the pharaoh how the pyramid will look. Tell how many workers you will need, when the project will begin, and how long the project will last. Make a list of the materials needed to build the pyramid. Hatshepsut reigned circa 1498 B.C. to 1483 B.C. Hatshepsut was the daughter of a pharaoh. She also was married to one, King Thutmusa II. When he died, she became a regent, or a ruler in the place of a young king. She ruled in place of her nephew while he went on military expeditions. Later, Hatshepsut took complete control. She supported her claim by creating a garden in a temple for the sun god Ra, who she claimed was her real father. The wall of the temple read, I, Hatshepsut, shine forever in your faces through that which my father hath desired. I have entered into the qualities of the august God. He hath recognized my excellence. Hatshepsut was often portrayed wearing the clothing of a pharaoh, including a false beard. On the walls of her tomb, she is often described with a male pronoun. This was because the Egyptians believed that all kings were males. There were not many military campaigns during her reign, which lasted until her death in 1483 B.C. However, she sent several trading expeditions in search of riches. One of these expeditions was to Punt, on the northeastern coast of Africa. Myrrh, which was used to make perfume, was one item the Egyptians brought back with them. Even though her reign was peaceful, later Egyptians did not like that she was king. They eventually took her name off the list of Egyptian kings. Learn from biographies. The Egyptians were not accustomed to women pharaohs. Some officials supported Hatshepsut, while others did not. How would this have made ruling difficult for her?